In this segment, we're going to take a look at network cabling. If you're ever in a point where you have to answer a trivia question, can you connect two computers together without using any cabling whatsoever or any network cabling? The answer is yes, using a null modem adapter. And CompTIA always likes to, to ask questions along those lines. The truth of the matter is you would never really do so in the real world. You use a crossover cable. Most modem boards already have a connection built onto them to allow you to do that. But in a trivia world, null modem adapters will allow you to do that. Next, we have a progression of networking cabling throughout history. One of the very first popular network cables was something called ThickNet. The reason it's called ThickNet is because it is incredibly thick and very, very difficult to work with, not very pliable. This is an example of that. If you would strip that cabling, what you would find is it looks like this. You've got the outer wiring, you've got the, the sheathing, you've got an insulator, and then you've got the core. The way you would work with that cabling is you would drill into it and then put a tap on it with a transceiver. It was actually called a vampire tap because of the way that it worked. Uh, the, the cord between the transceiver and the actual network interface card had to be very short, and it was not a good solution to networking, but it was the only one that was available at the time. We moved from that into something called thin net. Thin net, much, much thinner than the thick net, was very similar in nature, but again, much thinner, much more pliable. If you would strip that, what you would find is that you've got, again, an outer wrap, the sheathing, the insulator and the core in between there. But much easier to work with, it used the B and C connectors. You could make your own cable if you wanted to, but it was always easier to buy the connectors as well. These allowed you to connect to the back of the NIC card. We saw those in one of the earlier segments. It was one of the three choices on there. The connectors are available in, in uh, T connectors, barrel connectors, and all sorts of other things. You did have to have a terminator at the end and all the way at the very end of the line. You also needed what was called a grounded terminator. This would connect to the end of the card, and this would connect to the end of the electrical socket, giving you a ground there. Still in use today, but much, much harder to find. For the most part, if you find implementations like that, it's very, very useful for taking the connectors and just putting them together and making toys for the kids. That's about all you can do with those. Replace those with twisted pair. Twisted pair is far more common. It, its name comes from the fact that there are eight wires inside here. If you would strip it out, you would find the eight wires. And if you would strip it even further, you would find the reason it's called twisted pairs because the wires are actually twisted as you go through. It uses RJ45 connectors. We saw that with the NIC card segment as well. That's one of the major choices that you have in implementations today. As we move along, we come to fiber cabling. Fiber cabling is much thinner, much easier to work with, unfortunately much more expensive as well. Fiber cabling gives you lots of speed, gives you lots of flexibility, but it's using light instead of electrical signals and that's where a lot of the cost comes in. Some of the most popular colors are the orange and the yellow. This happens to use something called ST connectors. There's about four different types of connectors that are common today. ST is probably the most common. If you would strip this, what you would find is you would find a lot of the uh, outer core, you would find this insulation in between, and then you would find the actual fiber optic core itself is right inside there. And it, this will become more common over time, but right now it's too expensive for anything other than really server cabinets and such. Replacing everything else that we've seen so far tends to be wireless. Wireless is an ideal choice for small networks as well as for the flexibility that it offers as well.